Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla, and today we're talking about whether this guy should pay off his loan or save for a down payment. All right, so continuing this Reddit review series, this was posted in the personal finance subreddit and tagged as planning. It is titled 40 male, pay off loan or save for a down payment. So whenever they put uh, F or M in parentheses, they are showing whether they are male or female. So that's great. I now have something to call them. But let me go ahead and read this to y'all. Income, 106000 per year plus about 300 per month from Uber. Pretty good income right there. I right away am curious where they live, uh, but that's great that they are, you know, making some extra income. 2% goes to Roth and 5% to 401k. That sounds low, but let's see if there's any information. 11K in high yield savings account at 4.2%. I consider it my emergency fund. Roughly 50K dividend investment portfolio that I also use to safely sell covered calls. About 100 to 200 a month. Before we move on, I am not going to lie. I had no clue what a covered call was. So um, I looked it up. I still don't completely understand it. So it says a covered call involves selling a call option on a stock that you already own. By owning that stock, you're covered, i.e. protected if the stock rises and the call option expires in the money. Still one of the most conservative income trading strategies that smart investors use in order to make additional weekly or monthly income. Uh, something that I would not dabble in, but hey, I guess if it's working for this guy, um, I'm curious as to why they started that versus like more in their Roth or 401k, but let's see. Okay, so the only one big spending I have planned is to do some dental work, which will cost about $3,000 after insurance and FSA. I have an investment property that pays for itself but doesn't generate anything extra just yet with about 30k equity in it. I'm pretty handy and so far was able to handle all issues myself. Have a car loan of 20K at 1.9%, 520 per month payment, 24K consolidation loan at 10.7%, that's pretty high. Ooh, even worse is it's $1,116 per month. About 2K in credit card debt ranging around 18 to 20%. Rent is 1,200 per month plus roughly 200 for utilities. Okay, so this person rents an apartment or a house but owns a home separately and they rent that out. So it sounds like they're trying to expand that. Okay, apartment. Apartment lease is until July of next year. I've been checking out the area and can get a decent house for about 250 to 350K. So I've been playing with two scenarios. One, pay off my credit card and use part of portfolio money to close consolidation loan and save aggressively to have enough money for down payment by next July. The main problem with this is most of my stocks were bought during uptrend two years ago, so selling will create capital loss, which I know I can use for tax loss harvesting. Number two, shop around to refinance loan at lower rate and longer term to reduce monthly payment, pay a bit extra with Uber money, and save to achieve same goal by July. Once July comes, depending on how much I'll be missing from putting down 20%, I can eliminate part of the portfolio and pull equity. What do you guys and gals think makes the most sense? There's a lot going on here with, without giving enough info. To, let me start by saying that. So with most Reddit posts, people do not provide enough information. I feel like I would need much more info to give them the best response. My first question right away is, are you single or married? Do you have children? How stable is your job? What are your financial goals in general? because I'm curious where you want to be. You know, you're 40, so it's not old or anything, but that's like you're at a point where you need to make sure you have enough money invested so that you can be good in retirement. Um, also, I'm interested in where you live. It sounds like it's somewhere pretty average or, you know, like a low cost of living area. Maybe like, this sounds like Georgia, honestly, a $1,400 for housing, maybe somewhere in the suburbs. You're able to buy a decent house for about 250 to 350. That also applies here. So I'm just gonna assume that. This one I'm gonna have to make a lot of assumptions and I need to write things down. So 
it's gonna be two seconds to y'all, but I am going to write some things down and go from there. <laughs> okay, I wrote stuff down. Let's break this down. Let's break his situation down. And this is a lot of assumptions, which I will go through. All right, he said his income is $106,000. I don't know, I'm assuming this is gross. That's what I'm gonna do. And then he says he makes 300 a month from Uber. So about 3,600 per year. And if we add that up, that's gonna be $109,600. Monthly, that would be a gross income of $9,083. However, I plugged his numbers into a calculator that I found online to determine like your net income. And that's about 5,700 per month net. And I think that's being fairly generous. So he should probably take home a little bit more. I did put in that he contributes 2% to his Roth and 5% to his 401k. 2% to his Roth would be about $182 per month or $2,180 per year. That stood out to me. I This is definitely my opinion and, and thought. That's what this whole point of the video is, right? But uh, that's a little low. Like in my opinion, you should be maxing that out. Anything that has a limit on it like that, where it's a small limit, specifically the Roth IRA, I am a firm believer that if you have the ability to max it out, you should max it out. So I don't know, he didn't say if he does later on. Maybe he adds a bunch more before the deadline, but right off the bat, that's not enough to your Roth IRA. Second, 5% to his 401k. Maybe this is a company match as well, but that is about $454 per month or $5,450 per year. It's not awful, but still only 7% being invested. I don't love. However, this person, it sounds like they really want their portfolio to be primarily real estate. That's not something I am choosing to dabble in, at least not at this point. I don't, I don't really see myself doing that too, too much. It's obviously just not my favorite way of having my portfolio or, or my retirement, but it looks like that's what this person is trying to do. Now, they did not share how much they have in their Roth. They did not share how much they have in their 401k. Maybe there's a bunch, but I would say they should be increasing this. Maybe they do have a decent amount in their portfolio across the two. They are 40 years old, so probably at least 15, maybe 20 years of working and investing. So who knows what it's at, but they do have a 50k dividend portfolio. I would be interested in hearing how they heard about this, why they wanted to do this. Not my style of investing, once again, not something I would I would recommend, but if they're educated enough on it, then, then sure. The next thing I did is basically list out their expenses. So first of all, as I mentioned, we're working with about $5,700 per month. That's their net income or what I'm assuming is their net income, and that's being generous. They pay $1,400 for housing and utilities. Then I listed their debts, so 520 for their car. That's a lot, but at least the interest rate is low. That's a very high minimum payment. Um, not sure what you're driving. I think that's like the norm with cars these days, and I just find that insane. That's a lot of money, but um, it is what it is. At least the interest rate is low. Then they have that really high minimum payment of $1,116 for their personal loan. That one's at 10.7%. We'll talk about that. He did not share what his minimum payments are across his credit cards, but I am just going to put 50. And then I put 1500 for everything else. He didn't share any of his other expenses, but for all other spending, including food and food out, I put 1500 which is also maybe too much. Uh, obviously, I have no clue. I don't know where they live. I don't know what they do. But if you subtract all of that from their take-home pay, they are left with $1,114. So again, to be generous, let's say he has a thousand left over per month. The first thing I would do is pay off that credit card or credit cards, however, however many you have there. He said it was 2,000 at 18 to 20%. Uh, that's a no-brainer in my opinion, like just get rid of that because it's costing you a lot in interest and it sounds like your income is decent enough for you to knock that out. I would say just cash flow it. If you just cash flow it, you could probably pay it off in two months or less, but even better, I would say to put that 1000 that you have left over for the month to your credit card and then pull 1000 from your $11,000 emergency fund and get rid of the credit card debt. It doesn't make sense to have credit card debt that is, you know, 19% while your high yield savings account is only at 
4%, which is it's a great rate, but doesn't compare to the 19% that you're losing on your credit cards. So yeah, right there, you should be credit card debt free this month or next month. Also, he had said this, but definitely look to refinance that personal loan. I'm going to assume your credit score is fairly decent, so you can probably get a lower rate. 10.7, you know, if you look at the life of the loan and if you're paying that amount per month, you're not gonna lose too, too much. I mean, this is subjective, of course, but you're not gonna lose too, too much in interest, but if you can lower that interest rate by refinancing, definitely do so. I do think he can lower that pretty significantly, but for the calculations that I was using in my debt snowball slash debt avalanche tracker, I was again generous with this number and said he could refinance at a rate of 8%. Now, since I am not talking to this person directly and I don't know about their goals, I don't know their, their risk tolerance and all of that, I want to go about the situation where they either don't have to touch that dividend portfolio or they limit how much they, they pull from that because he is 40 years old. I think you should probably have a higher nest egg, leave that money there. I don't know about those covered calls. I would say like stop doing that. You're probably better off just letting your money grow and or putting more to your Roth IRA and 401k and, and getting closer to retirement that way. But there's just, there's too many factors with it. Now, some of y'all may not agree with this, but this was the best scenario that I could kind of come up with. And this is assuming he's fine with continuing to pay that personal loan. So it doesn't sound like paying off debt, like being 100% debt free is a top priority for him. So I would say once your credit cards are paid off, get that out the way and you refinance that personal loan as soon as possible pay the minimum on it, but keep that same minimum that you were originally paying. So that 1,116, just pay that minimum, at least that amount every single month after the refinance until it's completely paid off. You would probably have it paid off by like February, 2025, according to my spreadsheet. But again, I this is just me guessing that that new rate that you would have. Um, but if you look at the interest that you would be paying on the life of the loan, it's about $2,000, which to me isn't a crazy, crazy loss. So that $24,000 is going to turn into about $26,000 that you've paid total once it's completely done. If he really wanted to prioritize getting these debts paid off, then he would need to put that $1,000 that he has left over from his income to the personal loan every single month and get that paid off. He could probably do that by July of next year or so, and then delay the purchase of a home, but we're assuming he, he does want to absolutely purchase this house July, 2024. That's what I say to do with the personal loan. With the car loan, minimum payment. That minimum payment sucks, 520 per month is a lot of money. That's like half of your housing right there but it is what it is, like I said, so I would say continue to make the minimum on that because the interest rate is so low and speeding it up isn't gonna make a huge difference on the interest that you save. It will free up a bunch of cash, but since the goal is July, 2024 to buy this house, I say just make the minimums. He did also mention that he has a $3,000 dental procedure coming up. So that is one where I would say to cash flow it plus also pull from your emergency fund and then slowly build up your emergency fund over the next year. This is where those questions I asked at the beginning are really important. Like if you have children, if your job is secure, because that would really make me consider you keeping a little bit more cash in your emergency fund. But I would say keeping it around 10K is probably fine. One thing that does concern me is he already owns a home. So if an emergency pops up there, it's probably going to be pretty expensive. And because of that, I would say to, to bump up that emergency fund. But yeah, for that dental procedure, I would say to cash flow it, pull from your emergency fund, slowly get it back up to where it was. So now let's pretend it's about one month from now. He is credit card debt free. He refinanced his personal loan to a lower rate. He's continuing to make minimum payments on his car. He has about a year to save. So what I would do is that $1,000 that you have extra per month, put that aside for your down payment savings. I would say over the next year, he can save at least $12,000 for this down payment because you know, 12 times a thousand or up to 15,000, 18,000, depending on if he wants to take on some more Uber driving. 
and maybe even cutting some expenses. Your salary is pretty decent. I don't know your living situation and, and what you're spending your money on, but if I had a breakdown of everything you're, you're spending, I probably could find things for you to cut down and minimize. And then when it comes to that down payment, he did mention wanting to have 20% for this house. So I did 20% of the median of the house range he was saying. So 20% of 300,000 and that is $60,000. So he would, he would be short quite a bit if he was just saving. So at that point, a couple of months before you actually buy your house, I would say to do a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. He did mention that his other house has 30K in equity. Over the next year, I think that will potentially increase. Maybe he could go ahead and look into doing that right now, but that will increase his current mortgage. And since he's currently not profiting from whoever's renting out that house, then it's going to, you know, cost him more each month. But if you think that the value of that property is going to go down in the next year, then that's something you could do now. Or he could wait until closer to July 2024 and it could potentially increase and he would have more money to work with. So his 30K, 35K, potentially 40K or more in equity, plus his 12 to $18,000 in savings, is close enough to 60k and he would be able to make about a 20 percent down payment for the next house it may not be a perfect 20 percent but it's very very close and maybe he would get a house that's closer to 250 instead of 300 so that right there would be perfect otherwise if he really did want to get to 20 percent for that down payment he could pull from his dividend portfolio the the final few grand. I would say to leave it there and just pay the PMI. It's only going to be a few months and then you can knock that off. Yeah, this one is a tricky one, I will say. Uh, I have so many questions for him and I think that would help me to guide him a little bit more. But it sounds like he has made a decision and just wants to do that. So, you know, in a perfect world, I would say hold off on purchasing that next property take care of that person alone, maybe bump up your emergency fund even more and save for a down payment a little bit and then start thinking about buying that second property. But you know, once somebody has a vision in their head, they kind of just go after it. I mean, I think overall he'll be okay, but I would be interested in hearing more about his current portfolio outside of that dividend portfolio. Let me know your thoughts on this one. If you are in a sticky financial situation, feel free to email me with as much detail as possible. I will anonymously create one of these videos. Or if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I will also have my link down below for you to apply for that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.